But Jesus said, no. Look, the basis of all of what we do breaks down to two things. Is it of man or is it of God? That's it. Now, in our day-to-day -day lives that we do, there are things that man teaches us that's okay. But in religious settings, in the religious setting, it's not okay. It's either from God or from man. And we have to decide where it is. Can, can we figure that out? Isaiah seems to think so. My lesson this morning is, come and let us what? Reason together. Isaiah thought we could figure this thing out. It is our obligation to determine what we do. Is it from man or is it from God? The instrument. That's a big push nowadays, is it not? We have a Church of Christ right down the road. Brought in the whole full band. Is that from God or is that from man? Who determines that? You? Me? Is it my opinion? Is it their opinion? Who determines that? We have to be people of the Bible. Authority is what determines that. God will determine that. When we hear uh, words like uh, uh, John 3, 5, unless you be born of water and of the Spirit, right, you should not enter the kingdom of heaven. The Spirit. We're going to learn today in the lesson that that Spirit is the Word of God. You don't even know who Jesus is if it wasn't written down for us to understand. If it wasn't given to us by God. That's where we go, guys. We don't have prophets today. God has given all of what man needs. To be thoroughly equipped. Hey, Ron. Yeah, you know, who, when we tell, he's brought up a very good point. When we're in, and we're studying, and the big push now today is, and I'm not going to be able, LGBT, LGB, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a whole slew of things now. So, we take them to Romans, right? And we study through Romans. And what do they say? You're a bigot. You're a racist. They point back and they call you things that you despise, right? You despise them. God doesn't like people who are racist, <laughs> whether you're black, brown, or white. God does not like that. This whole issue has been settled. Remember when Moses married a woman? Right? And she was, as the Bible put, King James says, woman of color from Ethiopia, I believe. And when 
they said, you know, we don't like this. And his brother and sister rile up the people and what did God do? Struck them with lepers. So, he's brought, yes, Steve. No, no, go ahead. Hosea 4, 6. My people. Think about that. Whose people? He says, my people. Whose people are they? God's people. He's telling that to his people. Guys, it's not a, uh, it's not a position of where you cannot know. You know what it is? It's a battle of the will. The very next sentence, my people are destroyed to lack of knowledge. Why? Yeah, go ahead. You know, judging is not condemned in the Bible. Matter of fact, what's condemned in the Bible, yes ma'am. She used the word righteous judgment. Psalms, what is it, uh, 119, 172, I believe. Thy word is righteousness. So when you judge righteously, you use the word of God to see what a person does in conflict. Where we have... Yeah. You read the scripture, and the scripture does the judging. You point that out to people, and they say, You're judging. No, God's judging. This scripture is We were, uh, I'm going to bring up a story. Uh, I was, this was a, a while, a long time ago. And uh, I like studying with people, I really do. And I enjoy it. And we were, I was studying with a woman who was a member of the Lord's Church who had married an individual who was not a member of the Lord's Church. 
And she wanted him to become a member of the Lord's Church, which is a desire that everyone would like to have. In that study, come to find out, she had been married before. And they were divorced for, uh, for not the correct reason, as outlined in the scriptures. So we studied it, went through it. And she, at the time I, this is probably 25 years ago, at the time I was younger. <laughs> and so we were going through that. And it got a little contentious. And I said, look, I probably understand I'm, I'm young. How would you like to, let's meet up at the church and I'll find an older gentleman. Not, not as old as Bobby, but <laughs> somewhere in between Bobby and me and we'll try to find someone. So I came up and we set a date and I came up and I, <laughs> and I think um, Maxie probably hated me for this, but I saw him walking and I said, hey, Max, you're perfect age. So he said, absolutely, we would love to, uh, we would, I would love to help you out. So we met. So, you know, we were in Matthew, and he, he said, you know, open up Matthew 19, and we started. And so he got out a little piece of paper, and he said, I just want to make sure that this is correct. And he diagrammed it out. And so he read Matthew 19. He no sooner ended Matthew 19, hadn't even started, just read. This is what Bobby's talking about. She started to cuss us out. And her husband was just sitting there staring, watching it. Just going after Maxie, I mean, a verbal abuse. She gathered up her stuff. Maxie was following. And, <laughs> Maxie's one of the most gentle, kindest. Uh, I mean, it just hurt him to the quick. But that stuck with me. He didn't say anything except read from the scripture. But what happened was, is the scripture is a two-edged sword. It cut, and it cut like a knife. And she knew. Now, to her credit, we both got a letter. It was mailed up here to the, to the building, opened it up. She couldn't have apologized. It was three pages. I'm so sorry, you ne nothing but the good of my soul. I am so sorry, so please forgive me, please forgive me, please forgive me. But that incident, that event stuck with me. The word of God is powerful. I'm not sure where I went with all this, but appreciate you, Ron, back there. Look, judgment. Yes. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Yeah. Did you hear his point? You know, when it comes to your actions, people don't like to be judged. But when you're judging, we just finished with the Olympics, right? The Olympics had a lot of judging in it, but that's okay. They can watch something there and say, that, by the way, that is amazing what, those, what people can do on ice and snow. These snow skiers nowadays. Of course, anyone that's been out with Hut Hutto would realize how good a snow skier he is. <laughs> All right, let's turn to Colossians 3 7. He shakes his head back there, but he fell one time. I got a picture of it and I gave it to him. Is it on your desk? It is. Because he does he never falls. I fall all the time. 
Colossians 3.17. This one we're very familiar with. Let's see, my eyesight is not as good. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hears, hymns and spiritual songs, with thank, thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Really? Everything I do? Is that what the scripture says? Everything I do. Does God regulate how I treat Lee? Does he? Does God regulate? You earn money. Some of us, by the way, more than others. But we won't mention those names. Does God care regulate how you spend your money? How you treat your wives, how your wives treat your husbands. Do they regulate that? Does God regulate that? Hebrews chapter, yeah, go ahead, Johnny. Uh, you were reading from over in Matthew 16 a while ago. Well, Matthew 16, verse 27 gives the answer to that. He said, The judgment day is coming, and Jesus Christ is going to be judging every man by his works. Just like you mentioned, uh, starting about the moment of uh, Isaiah, and then Jude brought it up in verse 3 the same way, earnestly contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. So, if everything, Hebrews chapter 12, we all think we know that. It's one of my favorite. Let's flip over there real quick. Kind of keep your. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings closely and let us run the endurance, the race that is set before us. Okay? We are commanded that whatever we do in word and deed, we should have authority for that position. Okay? We should have that authority. Now, are there things in life that can take us that are not religious in nature. In Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews says, let us set aside those weights and the sin that so entangles us. What does he mean by that? What did the writer of Hebrews mean by that? What he means is, yes, Johnny? You have to enter to win. Oh, that's a race. That's correct. What he means by that is there are things in your life that are not religious in nature that can pull you away from God. And he's saying, if that's happening, you need to lay that way aside. Now, I'm going to hit home with me. My son, when he was in football, we worked out all the time. You remember? He used to be, he weighed up to 285 pounds. The guy could lift the back end of a car. He was, he was, I set him on the same workout that I did when I was with the Houston Oilers. He started when he was in seventh grade. The guy was stronger as all get. Adam Floyd, he's setting records in the state. Right? If that desire took place of what was religious, I need to set it aside. Is lifting weights wrong? No. But if it takes the place of some, the, the worship, right? We have a tendency to uh, 
<laughs> we have a tendency to not want to be at services when we have other obligations, right? I've done it. You know, we went snow skiing one time up at my condominium. We go down to Fifth Avenue, a bunch of us, and so I was really stressing, guys, we're going down to Fifth Avenue to be with the brethren at church. So we had skied all day on Wednesday, and I got everybody up, and we got dressed, and we went down to the Fifth Avenue. <laughs> You're going to... They, they ride me so hard today about this. So I made everybody go down there. And in the middle of the prayer, I'm over there. Now, granted, I'm older than these guys. So I'm sitting in this prayer, and, I'm, and all of a sudden I go. <laughs> I was so tired. <laughs> and they just looked at me. You made us come down here, and you're over there asleep. <laughs> oh, they were so. That's a story that they love to tell to this very day. Does volleyball take the place? Does football take the place? You know, football's king here in Texas. Is that going to take the place? Hockey. You know, hockey games, we really wanted Sean to play hockey. Hockey's played on Sundays now. Yeah, Johnny? What Christ said in Matthew 7, uh, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things you need to be added to you. 1 Corinthians 4, 6. Let's go there. You know, I even got on the first page and I got, I bet I got 10 pages here. You, you know, you'd be glad, guys, that I, there's the first bell. Be glad that I have a flight that I got to catch or this sermon may go to 1130. All right, 1 Corinthians 4, 6. All right. I have applied all these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, brothers, that you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up in favor of one against another. In my prayers, I pray every day that I not bind on my friends that which is not bound in the scripture, and that when I study with people, I do not loosen on people that which is bound in scripture. We should not go beyond what is written. It's clear, precise. And it means something to us. Why? Well, guys, uh, let's turn to Ephesians. I'm running out of time here. I'm... All right. Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God of Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ every spiritual blessing in heaven and places. Even he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and blameless in love, predestined for adoption as the Son through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of the gracious Glorious graces, grace, which he has blessed us in beloved. Before the foundations of the world. Okay. Guys, I don't, I'm running out of time. Jeremiah talked about a new covenant. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. And that this new covenant, you know how important this new covenant was? I can't walk. Before the foundations of the world, before he spoke the sun, the moon, the stars, before the trees and the animals and the plants, before man himself, 
He ordained Jesus and his church to be into the future, all of us are where we're going to be placed. How important is that to you? Jeremiah said that God is going to give us this testament, this new testament, the, his will on what we should do. The studying of the scriptures, the New Testament, is not an optional thing. One person just sits back and just says, you know what? I don't need to do that. I don't need to do it. This is not an optional thing. How you and I know what God wants us to do is to study the word of God. Now, I can stand up here and we can go over the scriptures and you're going to learn through it and you're going to write notes. That's a good thing. And then you're going to go back and be just like the Bereans and you're going to see, hey, did he say the right thing? That's a good thing. Because the word of God is going to thoroughly equip you. But it's not an optional thing where you're just going to sit back and not do anything. Why do you think that they always use in Scripture an athletic event to talk about Christianity? You know, uh, running a race. We just read that in Hebrews chapter 12. Right? These physical endeavors, these, it, even back then they knew how much effort and training goes into those things. And as spiritual athletes, you should too. And what's your training? The studying of the Word of God. I appreciate everyone's comments. I really do. I didn't get off the first page, so. But I am grateful for it. Thanks, guys.